We're at another house today here, and we're gonna be here for the next week or two, doing a lot of stuff here. It's pretty much a blank canvas. I love jobs like this. Let's go inside and I'll show you some of the areas we're working in. All right, so we're gonna be doing something on this dining wall eventually, not this session. This is the living room, kitchen area. We're gonna be doing a coffered ceiling up in this higher ceiling right here. So we may get to this ceiling next week. It kind of depends on if we finish some of the other stuff that we're gonna be starting, like over here in the master bedroom. There's carpet, so I'll go ahead and kick my shoes off. So pretty good sized master bedroom here. We're gonna be doing an accent wall on this large wall right here. Anytime we do stuff on uh, vaulted ceilings, we always stop right here, especially on this one, but a lot of times the second vault is lower and people wonder like, do we do it on that little section? And the answer is no, we only do the, um, the vertical wall. We don't ever go on the, the slanted part. And right here by the entry in the front door, we're gonna be doing something up this stairwell wall right here. So that one will happen next week for sure. Maybe even get started on it this week. So here's a view from the second floor looking at that. Then this kind of game room area, we're gonna be doing a pretty simple yet fancy design up on this ceiling here. Should be pretty cool. And then our other goal for this week is to get board and batten on this wall right here. This is another bedroom. And this is going to be like a five foot, six foot high. I'll look at my notes. But this is going to be a nice, fun job. Looking forward to get started on this one. And it looks like John just pulled up. So we are good to go. Nice view from here as well. So let's get started. All right, first things first, we got the floor protected. Now we can actually snap our chalk lines. When it comes to snapping lines on carpet, take our word for it, cover the floor because you'll never get that blue chalk out of the carpet. It's pretty miserable trying to do that. And with that, now we can bring some ladders in. If we put the ladders just on this thin plastic, it just stabs a hole through it. So we put the drop cloths on top of it. Right, we got all this covered now. If you guys don't work in finished homes, half the battle is like getting the stuff prepped just so you can work in it. So we'll throw a drop cloth in here, then we can get to snapping. So a lot of these houses out here, they have the driveway in the back. So I'm just walking around to see if it's clear enough for my truck to swing in here and back up so we can unload a lot of this stuff. This is the house we might actually set up right there. That's a good shaded area. Oh yeah, I'm for sure coming back here. We'll back up right here. We'll keep all of our stuff in there. We don't even have to carry that stuff through the house. It'll be perfect. You see how it has that real simple crown? Right. I think it looks pretty good with that. What do you think? I like it like that. That'll probably be the same crown that we do in the coffered ceiling as well. Just a real simple, because I know you guys were saying you really weren't big on crown, so we could just keep it real simple, you know. But that's a nice right. architectural piece for the top, and it looks good, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. That's perfect, yeah. and you can, you can check everything out. We'll have all of our lines on the wall at that point, and then we can get a thumbs up from you, and we'll go get the material. Okay, awesome. All right, thank you. See you later. Thank you. Okay. Uh -huh. Bye. Bye. So first thing we need to do with this wall is figure out our reveals. And the biggest one that concerns me is the top one. I just spoke with them on the phone about this. I was wondering if they were going to use a crown and they actually are. And we're going to use this one. I keep the samples in my truck. This is a five and a quarter, just simple cove crown. I actually use this one at my own house. So we're going to take this and uh, this is a one by six piece of shiplap, but it's the same thing as a one by six. So what I'm gonna do to figure this out is just push this up to this vaulted ceiling. And since crown is not made for vaulted ceilings, we have some play here. So we can move this wherever we want, like to get our three and a half inch reveal right here. So that's what we want. We want from the bottom of the crown to this board three and a half inches down here. So we can easily roll this around until we get that. The reason we can do that is because of this slanted ceiling. If I was going to be turning this crown up this way, 
I wouldn't be just putting this anywhere. I'd actually need to find out where it has to sit to make this turn and go up and then rip this down accordingly to get that three and a half. So since we're gonna be putting a crown here, we're, it doesn't really matter. We could just roll this around and just put a one by six up there. So hopefully that makes sense. But now that we got that, we'll go ahead and mark then for this and then we'll snap a line across. I keep this little trim head screw right here in the front pocket. And all that is, I just use this to tack into the drywall and then I hook a snap line on it so I can do this solo. Just enough where it gets a grab. And then my snap line, I just hook that on there and it hooks perfectly on that screw. And since it's threaded, it kind of like locks it in place so it won't come off. I'm going to just take this thing all the way over here. And I pull it tight and snap that line. So we get some questions about these accent walls, like how do we figure them out? Generally we have an inspiration picture either from online or from my website or a video that we've done. And they say, hey, I want to do something like this. And then we try to make it as close as we can to that if that's exactly what they want or they can change it. So now that we have our perimeter snapped out, our styles up the side in our top rail, we still need to figure out our bottom rail, but I'm not worried about that right now. We need to figure out the spacing for these panels and then the breakup of them. That's what we're gonna figure out right now. Two eleven and three quarters. 211 and three quarters. So what we just did, we just measured from the bottom blue line to blue line and then from the top blue line to blue chalk line. Now we have our, our width here for the inside of these panels and that came out to 211 and three quarters. Now we have a couple of decisions we need to make. How many panels do we want to have on this wall? I've already decided, and this is just through vis visualization, that it's either going to be five or six and basically how I figure that out is I just look at it and say like one, two, three, four, five, six, or I try to visualize it in, in bigger panel sizes. And once you get down to the two numbers that you're deciding against, you got to ask yourself something else too. So check this out. If I have this room, I'm going to draw on the wall. This wall will get covered up. Let's say this is the wall that we're making. And there's two choices I have. I can either have a vertical style right in the middle, or I'm going to draw another room example, or I can have the panel right in the middle. So it could be like that. Now, whichever one of these you want, that will determine the number. So if I want the vertical style right in the middle, that means I would have the same number of panels on each side, which would give me an even number of panels. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, six. So this would be the number six wall. If I did it this way with the panel right in the middle, this would be one and then same thing on each side, two panels. So we'd have one, two, one, two. So this would be the number five wall. So really we're, we're just deciding do we want a panel right in the middle or a vertical style right in the middle. And we're going to go with this one because this is about 32 inches from the math that we've done. And this one is about 40, which we feel is a little too wide. So there's also the opinion that if you're going to be doing a wall like this, you should have an odd number of panels. I don't buy that. I don't know why there's awkward rules like that. This is all based off opinion and what you like. So just do what you like. I mean, if you'd rather have a style in the middle, go with that. If you'd rather have a panel, go with that. But think about all the dimensions that go into it. And after we did that, we're gonna go with this one. And just like Wayne Scott, however many panels you have, so we're gonna have six, that means we're gonna have five in between vertical styles. 
and we know those are going to be three and a half. So what we'll do, we'll do three and a half x uh, five, which would give us seventeen and a half, and then we'll take our width and minus it, uh, our seventeen and a half from that, and that will be. Let me do that real quick. Would give us one ninety four and a quarter and a quarter and then we'll just divide that by our six so divide by six and that gives us 32 and 3 eighths and that's the width of our panel so the way we're going to chalk this is going to be i'm just going to hold my tape measure and again this process right here does not have to be like perfection this doesn't have to be dead on this is just, again, a visualization to get the thumbs up from the customer. So we'll, we're just going to make this as close as we can, but it doesn't have to be perfect. So we're still good for the, the five grand on this one? <laughs> You're like, no, I thought we agreed on 200. <laughs> So now you guys can see the blue lines that we have for this wall. You can see our six panels. Next thing we need to do is figure out how we're gonna separate this with our larger panel at the bottom and then our smaller one up top. Before we do that, we need to figure out what we're gonna do for the base and the bottom rail. So for the base, we're not gonna throw this three and a half inch base back on. We're just gonna pop that out and get rid of it. What we're gonna do though, is we're gonna do a one by six which is going to be um, five and a half inches. So I'll mark that. And then we'll have a bottom rail that will sit behind that, that will reveal three and a half inches, just like it revealed on the top rail after the crown. So I'll mark up, this is just rough again. So we'll go three and a half inches right there. And then we'll do that on both sides and we'll snap both of these lines right there. And then we'll measure this. And we're going to do a one third split on this. So the larger panel will be two thirds of whatever's left over and the top one will be one third. That's how we're going to break this down. All right. Now for this, make sure I'm good there. I'm going to kind of snake my hand down, pull this thing on my knee and let's see where we're at. 104 and a half. Let me go ahead and check over here as well just to get an average. And we're at 104 and just over a half. So I think we'll be good. It's very rare to have dimensions that are this spot on. Usually it's not, we're not this lucky. So 104 and a half, let's do some more math. We need to subtract one horizontal rail that's the thickness of these. So that would be three and a half inches. It's going to be the same as our vertical style. So we'll go minus three and a half, 101. So 101 is the space left over. And then we'll just divide that by three because we're doing thirds. And that gives us 33.66. But we're, for this, we're not going to do that six. That's ridiculous. Um, 0.625 is five eighths. So we're just going to say 33 and five eighths. So it'll be like this. we got our panel. We'll drop our small horizontal rail. This will be 33 and five eighths. And this will be the other two thirds that's left over from that. And it really, that little 0.6666 satanic number, it doesn't really affect anything because it's so minuscule. All right, so 33, get on our line here, and 5 eighths. Then we'll, we'll go ahead and mark this too. That's at three and a half. All right, so this is a real good benefit of using the chalk line because this is how it's gonna look. We can make it exactly like this, but we don't really like it splitting it up in thirds. We're probably gonna split it up into fourths and just have a quarter 
above the, the mid rail. This right here looks just, the, the bottom panel is fine, but the top section, proportionally, it's not pleasing to the eye. So I already did the math to split this up into fourths instead of thirds. And what I got for the top of my bottom rail was 25 and a quarter. So I'm just gonna re-snap this and we're gonna go with this one fourth ratio. 25 and a quarter, yeah. Sometimes you think you got the math right and it, it looks good on paper, but when you snap it out, it's like, what? That doesn't look right. So then you change it up. And uh, John made a really good point that if we would have went with this five, the third ratio split probably would have looked better. So I'll keep that in mind for next time. If we're gonna do an odd number of panels, we could probably split them up oddly as well. But if we're doing our six even number, we could split it up evenly. So if you're gonna do that, just keep that in mind. That actually makes sense for us. Much happier with that. So at this point, we're gonna measure this up see what we need. We're actually gonna go snap the other room upstairs. Our goal is to get those two done within three or four days. So we can measure this, see all the material we need and go get both of those rooms materials at the same time. So that's what we're gonna do next. And next time we see you guys, we'll be installing all this.